and Israel never, never been satisfied. And they use these weapons, you know, to mass murder Palestinians. So in my gut feeling, it will be successful, to answer your question, to be successful from the perspective of pro-Israel, AVAC, and Christian Zionists. But I think also he will reiterate, he will reiterate the negative things that uh, the, 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 the progressive people, people who are in solidarity with the Palestine. While the Israeli occupation continues, the genocidal campaign against the Palestinians in Gaza and the occupied West Bank, the American Congress opens its doors to the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, whose hands are stained with the blood of the Palestinian children and the Palestinian women to address the American people and market his policy of murder and killing. To talk about all that, I have with me from the United States, Mr. Maher Abd El Qadir, the U.S.-Palestine Parliament. You're welcome, Mr. Uh, Maher. The Palestinian American Congress, you are saying. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Osama. Uh, yes, Mr. Thank you Mayer. very much for this opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. The, the Israeli Prime Minister, whose hands are stained with the blood of the Palestinian children and women in Gaza and the West Bank, is in the United States today preparing for his speech tomorrow at the Congress. Don't you think that this is a blow? to humanity and justice by the American Congress to open its doors to Netanyahu? Uh, it is, but it's easy to say, and it's very hard to achieve or accomplish for one single reason, okay. that you know the influence of pro-Israel, the Israeli lobby, the lobby, and the Christian Zionists in the United States is so immense and so, yani, deep, deep, deep rooted in all the political institution of the United States, starting with um, um, the White House, going to the State Department, going to the Congress and most of the institution uh, that they rule and oversee uh, policies in the United States. They all are influenced uh, by um, the Zionist, uh, the Christian Zionist and the ABAC, and they cannot deviate from that uh, at all at this time. So his visit in line with the influence of those two major powers in the United States. But there are indications that his visit this time has resistance, has um, uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, displeasure or disagreement, uh, such as, for example, uh, uh, Kamala Harris, as you know right now, uh, is the emerging uh, front runner for the Democrats for the yes. president uh, position. Usually, when there is a joint meeting in Congress, he resides because she is the president of the U.S. Senate. Yes. So she uh, presides over the meeting. Uh, she made it very clear she will not be attending the meeting in Congress when Netanyahu will address the joint, uh, 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 mm -hmm. the joint uh, houses of uh, Congress, but she she was encouraged by the U White House and by the Biden uh, um, administration and others to attend a meeting um, uh, at the White House with Netanyahu. Yeah. So this is an indication that there is a displeasure. Many, for the first time, many U.S. Uh, House of Representatives and senators they are boycotting uh, the meeting, number two. Number three, we, yesterday, uh, tomorrow, there is uh, a huge demonstrations. Yeah, this, for, is the, the, you know, this is the question that I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Maher concerning the preparations for that tomorrow demonstration against Netanyahu's uh, visit to the Congress. If you tell us about the Palestinian community, the Arab Muslims, and the activists who support the rights of the Palestinians, what the preparations they have made for that? Yeah, just to continue, with the, I will address this point, but to continue with the first one, you know, yeah. uh, Netanyahu's visit to the United States and address uh, the joint um, uh, um, the houses of uh, Congress, it is not usual, and the media is looking at it, you know, that, you know, uh, Israel is getting support, and, you know, people are um, objecting to it, and it is 
highlighting that the U.S. policies in the Middle East so far under the Biden administration is incapable of forcing Israel to stop the war and the genocide on the Palestinian people. Now, since the um, uh, Congress um, uh, declared that, you know, Netanyahu is coming to address the Congress, uh, most of them, uh, solidarity uh, organ groups and organizations that support the fight of Palestinian, in, in addition to uh, uh, Palestinian organizations, Arab American organization, and Muslim organization, they've been working very, very, very hard to put a huge demonstration in Washington, D.C. And the, you know, the, the slogan of the demonstration is arrest Netanyahu. Of course, that's not going to happen. What it means that, you know, prohibit him from, you know, getting easily to the Congress. And we make our voices um, uh, loud and uh, clear that he is not welcome on, uh, in the United States of America. Yes, by and, and by, by the way, Mr. Maher, today, according to the Jerusalem Post, that about 60 Israelis sent a letter, an appeal to the Congress to reject Netanyahu's visit. To what extent do you think such letter from the Israelis themselves would have an impact on the American Congress and the Americans there? It's not going to have any impact. Really. Yeah. I'm being honest with you. So anyway, the demonstration will approximately have between 400 to half a million people tomorrow. So they will be crowding the area between the White House and the U.S. Congress. Now, you know, there are so many people who are objecting um, uh, you know, to his visit, senators declared that they are not um, uh, attending the, uh, the joint session. And many House of Representatives, you know, a dozen or more, they already made it known that they will not attend the meeting objecting to his, um, you know, visit and his addressing the U.S. Congress. But as, as we all know, the influence of ABAC, the influence of the Christian Zionists, the, uh, the, 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 the pro-Israeli uh, politicians within the administration, okay, that all together, they usually tell you what you want to hear, meaning, oh, we hear you, we understand, but, you know, we, you know, the U.S. Congress wants to hear this, um, uh, the administration. It's like, uh, yeah, uh, two days ago, there was a session at the White House where advisors to the president ahead of his visit said let's uh, uh, you know subject to you know Bing fear and Smotrich the yeah. two ministers in um, uh, Netanyahu's uh, administration to uh, boycotts like you know so we could put them under you know uh, boycotts meaning sanctions. you know we watch this mm. and things sanctions and boycott and things like that so the 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 the, 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 the decision almost was done and when Biden heard of it he said, when it comes to Israel, we cannot penalize elected personnel. So always they find a, a way out for Israel. Yes. And even and Lincoln himself, go ahead. Yes, and if we talk about a Palestinian step in response to that, for example, Netanyahu has with him one of the Israeli captives who was freed from Gaza and also some of the soldiers injured in Gaza. Now, to what extent do you think it's possible for Palestinians, for example, to have such a step and take injured Palestinians, victimized Palestinians, and go and address their American official institutions? You know, the first part of your uh, statement is possible that, you know, Netanyahu and the pro Israel people can bring anybody to show that Israel is being victimized yeah. and, you know, her action is justified. Because right now, I think one of his missions here in the U.S., especially with media and other institutions, visiting other institutions in addition to the U.S. Con Congress, to show that Israel is under, under attack and the attackers, they want to eliminate Israel, number two. Number three, you know, made the quote unquote um, issue of Israel being victimized, things like that. You know, when it comes to Palestinians, the American media, the American, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, officials usually downplay 
you know what uh, what 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 the Palestinian either experience or what the Palestinians suffer. It's like yeah. you know Blinken for the past ten ye- months, he's trying to mediate between you know the Palestinian and the Israelis. And trust me, if Blinken and Biden says to Israel, stop the war, just two words, Israel has no choice except to stopping the war because. They yeah. get all the funds, all the women from America, plus they get the support, like in the, the UN. Half of the U.S. vetoes throughout since 40, the 40s, since the establishment of the United Nations up to now, half of those uh, vetoes are used to block actions against Israel or in favor of Israel. Yeah, and so this... Thinking that, uh-huh, Mahar, and this thinking leads, the, yeah, this leads us to a follow-up question. Netanyahu is going to have a meeting with the American president, Biden, on Thursday, one day after the speech. And we know of the American initiative for a ceasefire. Do you think that there would be some change? Would President Biden this time pressure Netanyahu more to accept the ceasefire deal that the Palestinians accepted? I. I, I'm going to be blunt about this, and I don't believe and I don't think that Biden will apply any pressure. Mm-hmm. Biden, you know, they, they forced him to step out because he is uh, frail, fragile, weak, weak. Yeah. For 10 months, he did, couldn't, you know, challenge or stand up for Netanyahu. Even, you know, he was like, you know, the last piece uh, uh, proposal was dictated by Netanyahu himself. When the American um, government sponsored it, Netanyahu backed away from it. Yeah. So it's like it was insulting for the U.S. And he's becoming non-electable and he stepped aside. So he's not going to take any any um, uh, uh, definitive or decisive um, um, uh, action against Israel or against Netanyahu. I don't think so. But I do believe that, you know, um, uh, Paris, you know, uh, brings with her um, uh, a pro-Israel package, but at the same time, she brings with her um, optimism that she might uh, be, uh, from a humani- humanitarian perspective, from the fact that she is a progressive, from the fact that her daughter-in-law uh, had played a, a humanitarian role supporting the human cause of, um, of what's happening in Gaza back in November last year, all of the things that surrounds her gives um, a, a hope that she might be more pragmatic and more realistic until Israel enough is enough and stop. Especially, yeah. especially what happened in the International um, uh, Court of Justice when they declared that um, Israel occupation of the Palestinian is not justified and it's not legitimate and Israel should end it. And they demanded that the UN, UN look for ways to implement this. Yes, you know, and if call, just, right. just to confirm what you say, that 60 organizations called on the ICC to arrest Netanyahu today. Uh, my final question to you, Mr. Maher, do you think that Netanyahu's visit to the American Congress and his speech tomorrow there would be a success for Netanyahu and for the Israeli policy or a failure? What's your take? I think it will be a success from one uh, angle, which is the media and the politician, they will, you know, uh, have a stand of ovation and they want to show the American people that Israel, uh, that the United States is with Israel and supporting Israel. He's going to Netanyahu play the victim role and that Israel is threatened and, you know, his war against Israel, against the Palestinians is justified and, you know, Israel is being threatened. So the media will take this opportunity to highlight these things and show, look, your representative in the U.S. Um, Congress are having and are supporting uh, Netanyahu. So from that angle, from that side, I think it will be a very successful um, uh, meeting and um, uh, a speech uh, for uh, the Israeli, uh, sorry, the uh, Christian Zionists and for ABAC and the people who are pro-Israel. 
from a different perspective, okay, the people that, if you recall, the American universities um, have um, students in the American universities, especially the elite uh, or the Ivy League universities, they have a demonstration, they have had demonstrations supporting the Palestinian and um, uh, polls indicate that the youth within the United States of America is leaning more and more towards justifying, you know, the uh, the cause of Palestine and the humanitarian cause and calling for the Palestinian to have their independent Palestinian state and calling for Israel to uh, end its genocide and a human inhumane boycott of food and water um, 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 again, um, against the Palestinians. All of this from the other side, it probably it will have also uh, uh, tools for those people, you know, to say, look, he came to Congress and he played the victim, even though he's committing a genocide. He came to Congress and he's asking for help and support. Even the United States is giving them billions and billions of dollars, and they had over 145 equipment of um, heavy artillery and ammunition, and they gave them all the equipment worth, you know, billions and billions of dollars. And Israel never, never been satisfied. And they use these weapons, you know, to mass murder Palestinians. So in my gut feeling, it will be successful, to answer your question, to be successful from the perspective of pro-Israel, ABAC, and Christian Zionists. But I think also he will reiterate, he will reiterate the negative things that uh, the, 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 the progressive people, people who are in solidarity with the Palestine, they will see that he is reiterating exactly the justification for destruction, on killing, and, um, uh, and, 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 and you know, uh, mass murdering Palestinians. From yes. that angle, those people will use it to say, listen, Despite all what we're doing for Israel, he's coming to our land, he's coming mm -hmm. to our Congress, he's coming to our country, and he is trying to justify war crimes. He's a yeah. criminal. So, and our, our elected people are clamming and supporting him. So yeah. I think from that perspective, both sides will look at it differently, and this side will call it successful, and this other side will call it you know, here there is a reason why we have to stand up for Netanyahu and Israel. Yeah, so Israel is not going to win the public opinion anymore in the United States no, or the I don't think world so. in general. Uh, Mr. Maher Abdel Qadir from the US Palestine Congress, it has been a great pleasure having you on our program. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And, and uh, you know, hopefully tomorrow, tomorrow, demonstration will be a huge one against him For in sure. Washington, D.C. We will have many videos. 5 o'clock to Washington. We will have many videos from you about that. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. And from you, Osama Nazal, have a nice time.